Hey guys, it's Simi and this is Wrestling Unlimited. So last week, the news did come out that WWE had released the Velveteen Dream, or Patrick Clark, which is his real name. With that, there have been a lot of people saying, man, this was a long time coming. Man, a lot has happened with this guy to where he should have been released earlier. And well, Patrick Clark, or Velveteen Dream, whatever you want to call him, addressed all of this as far as his release and whatnot on his Instagram. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to read what he said, and it's a long one, so buckle up, folks. The allegations from April 20, 2020 have effectively derailed any upward momentum I had professionally and has ultimately resulted in my termination from WWE. My name is Patrick Clark, not the Velveteen Dream. Velveteen Dream is a character that I've spent years developing and trying to bring to life. The success of the dream character relied heavily on kayfabe. My ability to blur Patrick Clark from tough enough with this over-the-top personality. The character was conceptualized the day Prince passed, April 21, 2016. I knew nothing about him at the time, but my thinking was that I could use my interpretation of Prince to create an on-screen personality vastly different from who I am as a person. Q Velveteen Dream, a sexually ambiguous, gender-fluid, self-absorbed Devo. And as I learned more about Prince, I began to tame certain aspects of the character. Aspects that I deemed way too over the top and inconsistent with who Prince was as a performer. Now before I unpack, I will say I enjoyed the many stories I've been able to share on camera and I'm grateful to the many people who trusted me with their safety and wellness. Thank you to any and everybody who enjoyed and allowed me to be my character, whether you paid a ticket or walked up on me in Walmart. My goal was to provide you with the same escape that I was offered when I first started watching. My job was to play a character and to help advocate storylines and drama for the fans who cared to tune in. I take any job I have seriously, which is why I remained silent about these allegations. To me, addressing these rumors will be working against any already compromised ability to sell a character I've invested in so heavily. After I had been accused, I was given the opportunity to be in a storyline that lasted a few months and I worked in a few segments unrelated to the story arc. But now I feel comfortable in this position to share with you the details of my accusations. The night of April 20th, from my verified Instagram account, I posted a story to my followers, letting them know that my DMs had been open. I received a few different messages ranging from support to heckling and some inquiring about how to get started in pro wrestling. I responded to a few, but not all. And of the few, I responded to one account accused me of solicitation. The account belonged to a 17-year-old aspiring wrestler, Jacob, before he deleted it. In the conversation... Jacob shared his interest in working as a wrestler one day and asked what steps would be required. I messaged a short list of things he should consider if he was serious, physique, and promos to start. Physique, as an independent contractor, no one is going to make you train and eat in a way that creates an aesthetic of a believable pro wrestler. And promo, because our job is to sell drama, and you can't rely on someone flipping channels to stop to watch a choreographed fight. You're more likely to grab their attention looking into a camera with a strong and impassioned 30 second monologue. I also inquired about which schools he was closest to in relation to wrestling training, his weight and his height. Jacob explained how anxious he felt messaging me and asked me to verify that it was really me. I did find it strange because I had a blue check, but as a longtime fan, I remembered meet and greets and the day I would message wrestlers hoping to be seen. So I chalked it up to innocence and sent a voice message in my Velveteen Dream voice as to keep kayfabe. The full voice message has me asking Jacob about his height, weight, where he trained, and what school he attended. Jacob answered back with the voice message and I continued to answer his questions until I politely wrapped up the conversation. April 21st, I woke up to notifications and tags of created screenshots and videos of a conversation that I didn't have with Jacob. I immediately contacted WWE's talent relations and social media departments as to begin an investigation. Even after the investigation, WWE released a statement maintaining my innocence. The part that hurt for me 
was having a personal picture that I used in my personal life on apps being used to label me as a predator. I am in no way of the word a predator. This is the first and only time I've been accused of any solicitation to anyone. Until I was accused of grooming by Joshua Fuller, unlike Jacob, I know Josh. I met Josh after my stint on Tough Enough 2015 at a meet and greet, and we developed a friendship through a mutual trainer at GXW. Josh shared to Twitter screenshots of the first time we communicated through text 2016, an autographed picture from when we met, and an extremely contradictory story. Josh alleged that I made him feel uncomfortable, but contradicts himself twice by saying I was never sexual towards him. For those willing to research Josh's tweets accusing me, Josh's messages are in blue and mine are in gray. Josh claimed that he was a 16-year-old high school graduate and that he takes yearly trips with his friends to Orlando, Florida. I doubted what he told me, yet I kept my replies diplomatic and professional. The reality of the situation is that I was very helpful and respectful to Josh. Josh lives with his grandparents in rural South Maryland. Josh got a concussion in 2017 and, against my advice, insisted on wrestling. My worry came from Josh severely injuring himself, specifically his brain. I suggested he take time off from training to see a doctor. He declined because he believed he could work through the concussion. And I cut all communication from him in 2018 because I did not want to be partially responsible had he worsened his injury. But to have him accuse me of predatory behavior because I chose not to help was spiteful. Josh and Jacob are two of many people that I've helped, yet these are the only two who have found me to be malicious and predatory in how I go about helping others. What wasn't shared at the time, Josh Fuller reached out to Jacob over social media before Josh put out his own accusation. When this came out, Josh Fuller temporarily deleted his twat account as Josh Fuller PW, which is important because in all the social media confusion, Josh Fuller is the only one who suggested that an investigation had not been done and that had not been contacted. Jacob deleted his social media after he was outed for being a member of an anti-black group chat. There is a public forum, WWE IPSG stars, where people are bullying, selling, and sharing explicit photos and videos of multiple wrestlers, and no one has done anything to have this site taken down. All in all, this entire experience defamed my character and ultimately accomplished what is sought out to do, and that was to see me released. My hope is that over time, people can put two and two together and realize that all the allegations surrounding me were baseless and untrue from the jump. I felt strong about not needing to defend myself on social media for a while now, but I understand the audience I work for. And those who know me deserve clarity. I'm thankful for the opportunities afforded to me and the memories I have as a receipt. God has always had me, and he always will. Dream is officially over. But Patrick Clark lives to fight another day. Now Clark himself hadn't been at many NXT tapings as of late. It was reported that he may have been at a Raw recently, but he hasn't really done much for the company in 2020. Based off of all of this, he is saying that the allegations are not true. He was very professional in the way he contacted people online, and they tried to spin it because he wasn't, I guess you could say, helping them the way they wanted him to help them in their careers or whatever it actually was. So I don't know what side to take. So with that, ultimately, something had to have gone down where WWE felt that it was no longer feasible for them to keep him under contract. So, I mean, there's got to be something there. Because Triple H has always, I guess you could say, on media calls, gone out of his way to say, nope, there's nothing wrong with Dream. He's just training. He'll be back on TV soon. So had, something had to have happened for him to fall out of favor with the company. But with that, let me know your thoughts on all this in the comments below. And if we do hear anything else on what could be next for the former Velveteen Dream, Patrick Clark, we'll have it for you right here on Pro Wrestling Unlimited. That's going to do it for this episode. Remember to comment below, like, and share this video. Like us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And subscribe right here on YouTube.